Hi folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Second Sun Woodworks. My name is Caleb, and today I'm going to be showing you how I built this apothecary cabinet. Stay tuned. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below and the little bell icon next to it so that you stay notified when I release new project videos. Oh, and don't forget to check out all of the other builds that I have posted in my library. This is my first time building an apothecary cabinet like this, and I gotta say, it was a fun project. It took a lot of work, but in the end, it paid off, and I think this apothecary cabinet will last a lifetime, or maybe two. So make sure you stick around and see how I did it. The first step in this project was to gather the 3 quarter inch plywood that I'll be building the apothecary cabinet out of. After that I ripped four separate pieces on the table saw, two that were 18 by 12 inches and then two that were 12 by 12. These four pieces will make up the four walls of the box. Next, I set my table saw to a 45 degree angle so that I could come back to the four pieces and cut bevels on the ends where the box will be connected together. Before gluing the box together, I needed to cut four rabbits on the back side of the box so that I could then set another piece of plywood that would sit flush and make up the back side of the box. And to do this, I used my table saw. This is kind of a difficult process to explain, so I put up the video over on the left after I had finished the majority of the cuts for the box. And you can see that there are rabbit cuts on the four ends of the box so that I could then put a piece of three quarter inch plywood. Uh, on the back side of the box to make the back of the box so that the drawers don't slide right through. Doing rabbit cuts on a table saw is pretty simple. You just repeat four different cuts on the four different pieces before you adjust the fence and the height for doing the cuts uh, four more times. Once I had completed cutting the rabbits on the back side of the four panels that make up the box, I went ahead and installed my dado stack blade on the table saw, and I set it to 3 8 inch wide so that then I could cut dados on the inside of the box panels that would hold the dividers uh, for the different drawers, as well as the dado cuts on the actual dividers themselves since there'll be three separate rows of drawers. Uh, and setting it at 3 8 inch wide allowed me to do two passes uh, for each of the dado cuts so that the 3 quarter inch plywood would sit into the different dados. Once I had completed all of the dado cuts, I set everything up on my bench to make sure that the entire box fit together. Uh, and you can see here that it fit together really nicely. At this point, it was then time to glue up the majority of the box, including the dividers. Uh, in the inside of the box using some type on 2 and these nifty Bessie uh, strap clamps that I picked up at Home Depot. I'll leave a link in the description below. These are really helpful for 
gluing up boxes like this, especially when you have 45 degree bevels. Once the glue up had dried overnight, I took all the clamps off and I measured out the uh, cut for the back side of the box and cut that on my table saw and then glued it into place. While I let the backside panel dry in place, I went ahead and started on the different drawers that would go into the different sections of the apothecary cabinet. These drawers are going to be super simple. Simple. They're just going to be made out of five separate pieces of three-quarter inch plywood. There's not going to be any rabbits or dado cuts. Instead, I'll just be butt joining everything together with glue and uh, nails. You can see here that I have the cuts for the six different drawers. Each of the drawers will be made up of five separate pieces of plywood, the uh, base of the drawer, the two sides, and then the front and the back. Before I uh, uh, use a nail gun and some glue to put these together, I'll be sanding them down. Uh, sanding them before you put them together is just a whole lot easier than doing it once they are uh, fully attached and made into the separate drawers. This sander simulates years of wear and tear damage. After that, I pulled out my finished nail gun and I got to the business of putting the drawer boxes together. Uh, using a small bead of glue and just a few nails. It's a good idea to shoot those nails in straight. Huh. While I let the drawer boxes dry, I went ahead and did a bit more sanding. 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 Sanding.
I also used just a bit of a, 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 a plastic wood to fill in some of the holes for the different nails. After that, I did just a bit more sanding with 120 grit paper, and I felt like I was losing my mind. After using a microfiber towel to clean up as much of the dust off of the box and the drawers, I then went on to doing the process of finishing with this uh, product called Brie Wax. If you've never heard of Brie Wax, this is an awesome product um, to use on plywood to get a really old and kind of shiny finish. It takes a bit of time, a little bit of effort to uh, rub into the wood. Um, but it really is a cool product to use, especially if you use uh, some steel wool to polish after it has some time to sit. Uh, I'll be doing that later on. Um, this can of Brie Wax was actually given to me by a friend uh, when I was living in Seattle, um, and I didn't use it for a long time. It sat uh, in, in a box and I finally pulled it out and used it for this project. I believe he received the Brie Wax from his father, who is a really, really good woodworker. Uh, recently moved to Montana, um, but uh, he definitely is an inspiration, so it's kind of cool to be passed down some Brie Wax from such a phenomenal uh, woodworker and uh, from a good friend. Thanks, Landon. Appreciate the Brie Wax. Like I said, using this Brie Wax takes a bit of effort. Uh, you have to use some sort of um, cloth to rub it into the wood, uh, and then you let it sit for a bit. Um, I just let it sit overnight. And then you can come back to it, and to get a really good finish, you have to uh, use some steel wool to uh, rub out the, uh, rub it into the wood and kind of give like a nice polish to the wood with the Brie Wax. Um, but this takes a lot of time and, and <laughs> one might ask themselves, how long can I watch somebody rub Brie Wax into wood uh, without getting super bored? So, while I rub this Brie Wax into the wood, I wanna take a quick moment to remind you why you are watching this video. Up here in the left-hand corner, you can see the box that I am building. This is a super fun project for those of you who are getting started with woodworking. Uh, so I hope that you continue watching to see how I finish the project. And now, let's take a really, really long time to do a bunch of scrubbing. Hi, Anthony Sullivan here, and this is the Turbo Scrub. Looks like someone took a big bloody dump all over my new tile, but it's no match for the Turbo Scrub.
look at how long the shaft is on the turbo strop. Those hard to reach areas are no longer a problem. No more bending and reaching. Stop camera. Riveting. Just imagine this running down. to get the turbo scrub. You get the scrubber. You get the long shaft. You get the little charges that you'll probably lose, but call within the next 30 seconds. made it past all of that hand scrubbing with all of this my uh, arms are a bit sore but the uh, brie wax really does um, shine through once you, you scrub it in and it makes like a really nice finish on the uh, outside of this plywood and plywoods you know not an extremely expensive wood this is just a three-quarter ply I think it's this pine or or uh, Douglas fir, um, but it uh, with the brie wax it, it makes it look pretty nice. Um, I'll get a couple close-up shots here in a bit, but um, I now need to attach the hardware that I got uh, for the fronts of these drawers, uh, as well as for this top section. I got some of these uh, these handles um, off of the internet. I'll put a link in the description below. But these. We'll just go right on top of here, and then there'll be the option of being able to carry this whole box, uh, almost like it's a, a trunk. And then also, I got these um, these little face front. They're like uh, almost like an apothecary, like mailbox kind of hardware that I thought would look really cool. And you can slide in little labels on the back side, which is kind of nice. Uh, but these will go right on the fronts of these. There's one on the bottom, one on each. Um, but I got to pre-drill some holes and so I actually have kind of a cool little thing to talk about. Um, I, I received a box in the mail recently uh, from a company um, called uh, Drill America and uh, they sent me this really nice handwritten letter. Um, I was really impressed by this. They they sent they they had checked out my my channel uh, second send woodworks and so they sent me this uh, this little set with some drill bits and um, and so I'm going to use these today and this is a really cool little gift that they sent me um, and like I said they they sent me this handwritten letter which man I was just really impressed by uh, the fact that they wrote me a letter um, that's the kind of stuff that I really like really value that so but then they sent me these. Uh, these drills which is a really cool little set um, it's got all these different drills you can see it kind of spirals in to the center uh, you have different sizes um, and then they got a, uh, little nifty marks on the inside so you can see what size you're getting and the whole thing can kind of come out as well but they're all stuck in this little case and I think this case is pretty pretty nifty because um, 
it's compact, uh, it's heavy duty, um, and it's got this little clip so you could clip it onto the side of like a, 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 a carrying bag or something like that. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. Um, and I'll put a link in the description below for this product. Um, they also sent me, this is cool, some like a little drill, America Decimal Equivalence, a little chart, um, as well as a pen, and, uh, and this like little flashlight thing, which was cool. Uh, but Drill America, thank you. I appreciate the, uh, the cool bit cooler. Um, Drill America, check them out. Seems like a good company. So I'm going to use these drills, or I'm, I'm going to use one of the drill bits from this set uh, to do the um, pre-drilled holes for the different hardware that I'm gonna be putting onto this box. Um, it's important when you're uh, drilling into just about any wood to do a pilot hole, as they call them, um, and uh, I'll use these drill bits, which is gonna be sweet. So let's do it. I made sure to measure out the center of each of the face fronts for the different drawers so that I could drill in the correct place. After I finished attaching the hardware for the front of the drawers, I moved on to attaching these two different handles to the top of the apothecary cabinet so that I could carry the whole entire unit around. At this point in the project, the apothecary cabinet was complete. Well, besides for doing my brand, which I'll do in a second. But, man, I was stoked. Having this complete was very, 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 very exciting. For those of you who have stayed until the very end of this video, congratulations and thank you so very much for watching another episode of Second Son Woodworks. Make sure to leave comments and questions in the comment section below. Uh, hit the like button, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and build something cool. Get in the shop. Thank you, folks.